prisons are filled with thousands of men who claim they're innocent, and Clarence Elkins is no different. Everybody in prison, they say they're innocent. But Clarence is one inmate who really is innocent. I got arrested, falsely accused, and wrongly convicted. An Ohio jury sent Clarence to prison for life in the brutal murder of his mother-in-law, Judy Johnson, and rape of his six-year-old niece. How would he convince the system he didn't do it? Mark Godsey from the Ohio Innocence Project came to his rescue. It right away caught my attention because it had all the earmarks that we're looking for. There was a very shaky eyewitness ID, and more importantly, there was DNA evidence that could be tested. That eyewitness was Clarence's six-year-old niece. She told the court, quote, Uncle Clarence did it. Then in a stunning reversal, years later, she recanted her story. I think it was 2002 when she took it back, when she said that she was afraid to go against what people were encouraging her to testify to. Clarence tried to get an appeal on that basis. He was denied. So his team hired a private investigator to identify people in the neighborhood who might be the real killer. One of them they identified was Earl Mann. Earl Mann, a convicted sex offender. Remember when Clarence's niece went next door for help after the attack? That was Mann's house. And his girlfriend had told the child to wait outside while Mann was inside. The girl never saw him. She didn't want to invite the little girl into the house to get another look at Earl Mann. He looked like Clarence Elkins. And he had just been released from prison a few days before the murder and rapes in this case and was living next door, who happens to look like Clarence Elkins. Look at them side by side. They both have thick eyebrows, and you'll be stunned at what Mann said to cops after an unrelated arrest. Earl Mann had been picked up for a violent crime and on his way to the police station said to the officer who arrested him, why aren't you arresting me for the murder of Judy Johnson? And in an unbelievable turn of events, Mann fell right into Clarence's hands. He was sentenced to the same prison. At first, I didn't want to point the finger and blame somebody without some kind of evidence. Um, so I contemplated on possibly maybe getting some kind of DNA from this guy. And he found it in, of all places, a prison ashtray. After years of praying and hoping, Clarence finally had the key that would unlock his cell door. I seen him putting a cigarette butt out and um, I retrieved the cigarette butt out of the ashtray, makeshift ashtray, and put it in a Bible concordance I have. Clarence took the Bible back to his cell, placed the butt in a baggie, and sent it to his lawyer. Secretly mailed it out, got it to the lab, and I got a call about a month or so later. We got a 99.9% .9 match. But Clarence needed some friends in high places to get the DNA results to the court. He found a key ally in Jim Canepa, who then worked for the Ohio Attorney General. So victim number one, victim number two, forensic evidence um, from the rapes match each other and exclude Clarence. And Clarence had another supporter at the AG's office who would become more than just a friend. A legal secretary named Molly, she eventually became Mrs. Clarence Elkins. I even thought, wow, is he really innocent? And then I was quite surprised that he was actually still in prison, and they had evidence overwhelming that he shouldn't have been there. Now, the full power of the office of the Attorney General was behind Clarence's bid for freedom. And in a dramatic turn of events, Clarence was completely exonerated. He walked out of prison a free man. I'm still pinching myself. The real killer turned out to be that neighbor next door, Earl Mann. He pleaded guilty to the crimes Clarence was accused of and sentenced to life in prison. To be part of proving your own innocence from behind bars and, and concrete walls and barbed wire, it's, that's pretty amazing stuff, I think. Today, Clarence and his sons are making up for lost time. When I see him walk out the doors, it's, it's kind of when it set in, kind of kind of went in shock all over again. They're bonding over bikes. But it didn't have the power. Billiards. Ugh. And posing for pictures at family gatherings. Oh, 
your heads aren't cut off. But what about the 800-pound gorilla in the room? The six-year-old niece who accused her Uncle Clarence. I still don't hold any ill-willed feelings towards her. She's just an amazing, strong person to survive. And so is Clarence, cherishing the freedom of riding his motorcycle whenever he wants. He and Molly established a scholarship fund at the University of Cincinnati Law School. That's where the Ohio Innocence Project is based. He says he doesn't want another innocent person to be behind the eight ball. I wouldn't wish that kind of nightmare on anyone, on my worst enemy. It's a uh, living hell, so to speak. As for Earl Mann, he will never see the outside of a prison again. On top of the murder charges to which he pleaded guilty in this case, he's also serving a seven-year sentence for three unrelated sexual assaults. Attacks that may have never happened had the right man been behind bars in the first place.